Well, good morning. Uh, we're out here doing a family hike. It's the Boys River Trail up in northern Maine. And um, just finished reading a book not long ago about uh, the rise and fall of Rome, I think it, it was called or something. And just some comparisons between ancient Rome and modern day America here on this bridge right now, this little uh, bridge you can see up there, up the river here. And um, there's the bridge, pretty neat. But anyhow, getting back to this subject of what happened to ancient Rome, if I could condense it down into two basic things, why did Rome fall? Well, number one, because they had too much of an expansionist policy. They, they got too thin with their troops. They, in other words, they had, they're going up into, you know, Britannia and Germania and uh, northern regions, and then they're going over into, down into Egypt, into Carthage, you know, and, and into all these different places. And uh, some pretty steep steps there. But uh, just an interesting thing that they spread their troops out too thin and then they would have some barbaric tribes, you know, would go and they would attack a certain area and the Roman soldiers would lose and then they would go someplace else. They'd have to go elsewhere and then it would be, you know, the troops couldn't get there in time to reinforce and things. And I remember the one battle, they actually lost 80,000 men in one battle, you know, 80,000 Roman soldiers. And you know, you go back to the ancient world, that's a huge loss. I mean, that's more than the entire Vietnam War losses for America. So, in one battle. So the Romans were taking a lot of chances um, trying to expand their territory. Well, America, we have military bases all over the world. I forget what it is, something like 80 countries or something ridiculous like that, that that there are bases in and you know we're stretched very thin um, but the other problem that ancient Rome had uh, was paying their troops there was never never seemed to be enough gold to uh, keep the troops paid well you go for a while like that and pretty soon the troops are not really willing to fight anymore because there's no money they're not being paid well America has kind of gotten around that issue because we have uh, you know, Federal Reserve notes, and we can create wealth out of nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I say nothing weird, but... <laughs> um, but the interesting thing about it is a lot of people say, well, gold, gold is a barbaric relic. It's just something from the past. Nobody cares anymore. Oh, that's not true. Um, first and foremost, the new BRICS currency that's coming out is going to be backed by gold. Um, well, the BRICS countries are nothing. They're nobodies. We'll see about that as we go forward. The pride of America is going to be brought down. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, the other issue is, um, there's different forms of gold. Do you ever hear of black gold? Texas tea, you know? Oil? That's a different form of gold. Have we fought wars? Uh, has America fought wars to uh, get more gold? Going up a pretty steep hill right now pretty neat but um, have we fought wars about black gold yes we have what about the uh, golden triangle and the golden crescent what was that about oh I don't know uh, heroin and drugs you say well brother you're, are you saying that the American government is about is trying to get heroin and things uh, yeah because we have an industry pharmaceutical industry that needs a lot of what would be called illicit drugs you can refine those drugs down and you can turn them into pharmaceutical pills. So, ancient Rome and a modern day America are not really that dissimilar when you actually study it. I'll show you this real quick here. You can see right there some blueberries. Wild blueberries are starting to, just starting to get ripe. You can see it here. Um, wild blueberries like wild soil and things like this the rocky areas and a lot of the pine and spruce and fir forests they really thrive with that acidic soil pretty neat but they're just all over the place right now down here these are all blueberry plants right there you can see some more blueberries they're green 
not ready to eat yet. But uh, Rome fell um, in a manner of speaking. You know, they, most people would say that, uh, you know, the Roman Empire split in two and, you know, Constantine basically in the fourth century, he changed Rome into, they went from uh, Imperial Rome, like the government Rome, to then a Roman church state with the founding of the Vatican and everything else. And, uh, but Rome basically never really dissolved per se. It was just, you know, a lot of the power was split up with Constantinople and things like that. So just an interesting study, the tie-ins between ancient Rome and modern day America and how we're going much the same way. You know, and I think another thing it should be a big red flag to most people is the fact that China, communist China, is buying up a lot of our land here in America. And I've heard a lot of theories presented that basically America is going to be cut up and given to different nations. Um, you can tell me what you think about that in the comments below, how you think it will be divvied up, you know. I've heard that uh, the New England states where we're at would be given to the European Union. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really want to be taken over by communist China with all their very uh, wicked policies and everything else. Uh, I've heard some people say that China should be given America because America is a Shemitic country if you go back far enough. And that China, you know, should be given it. I have to go out around this big puddle down here. Don't exactly have rubber boots on. Um, go down around that way. I'll, I'll meet you over that way. Um, so, there's Luther. He's enjoying himself in the water. He likes to <laughs> run around out here. But, um, you know, just an interesting observation that, uh, uh, outdoor filming, um, always a unique challenge, but, uh, just an interesting observation, the thing of comparing ancient Rome to modern day America and, um, seeing the similar things, you know, that our troops are spread out. And, and again, another one of the things that ancient Rome suffered from is there were a lot of civil wars and inner strife within the people because riches lead to apathy apathy leads to war um, people don't have anything to do with their time and so they start to fight amongst themselves and come up with they separate into different classes and different things based on religion or whatever else and then they all start to you know think that their way is the only way and uh and you say well don't you believe that brian you're a christian preacher don't so you believe in your way being the only way well i believe in the bible way being the only way to get to heaven but uh, the bible doesn't teach that the vast majority of people are saved born again christians the bible teaches that the vast majority of people uh, end up in hell that's the words of jesus christ and i believe it as it's written and um so if the vast majority of people are going to go to hell when they die then why would i try to force uh everybody to be a christian that doesn't work. Um, no, the real true secret to freedom is uh, liberty of conscience. People should be allowed to believe whatever they want to believe. Um, and you say, well, then how do you keep people from, you know, polarization or something and they start fighting and killing each other? How do you stop that? Well, the way you stop that is for people to work hard. People learn to suffer and they learn to, you know, come out here, a place like this, hike along and let the mosquitoes feed on you for a while and the deer flies feed on the back of your head, <laughs> right back in there. They always go for the back part, uh, like that's irritating. I probably killed 30 or 40 of them this morning on the back of my head, just like that, you know, and <laughs> it's a great blessing. Uh, hope everybody gets to experience it at some point in time, having a wild bugs biting you and trying to get your blood it's wonderful uh 
I wouldn't trade it for the world, by the way. I'm, I'm saying, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's just the way it is. You come out to a beautiful place like this, that's the way it works. And over there, you can hear all the, the river over there. But, um, you know, is Rome going to fall? Yes. Is, uh, or excuse me, is America going to fall? Yes. <laughs> Rome, America, yeah. Rome, America. Um, will America uh, last? No. Not scientifically possible. We've gotten to the point where our society is crumbling. The moral character has been purposefully destroyed by people who are trying to make money. And they know that uh, you have to appeal to greed in order to make money. And so there's a cycle which happens there where, you know, you can make money, you can, you can appeal to greed for so long, and then you're basically just dealing with people that can't pay debts anymore, which is where we're at right now. Um, most Americans cannot afford the life that they're living. So guaranteed to fall at that point in time. Uh, there's no way that we're gonna have wages increase. I just saw that uh, Burger King, unbelievably, is declaring bankruptcy. Um, hard to even fathom that. They're going to be closing 400 restaurants by the end of the year. 2023 here. Unreal. And uh, Bank of America is being fined $250 million for basically scheming and taking people's money, signing them up for things and charging them fees and whatever else. Uh, so people lose confidence in Bank of America. They'll probably start pulling their money out and Bank of America could collapse. Other banks can collapse. Again, oh, America's a strong nation, brother. You don't understand. We're, we're stronger than ever. You've been lied to. Um, if we're stronger than ever, then why did we have to raise the debt ceiling? And I heard recently that uh, they now can spend $4 trillion, print up $4 trillion, and uh, we've already spent a trillion, like in a month, I think it was. One month and our government has already spent one trillion dollars it's insanity and uh everybody's just trying to get their last little bit of wealth before the nation falls so just kind of doing a little walk here this morning thought i'd get some thoughts down um how does a christian respond to all of this we know that here we have no continuing city. Here we, we're just pilgrims passing through, essentially. So what do we do? Well, you have to, you know, have money. You have to be able to buy things. And, you know, nobody can just completely live off the land and whatever. So there is a thing of finances and laying up for your children and, you know, providing for your own and, and everything. That's important stuff. But... You know, you have to see the sins of a nation. And again, I've seen this in the comments section, people say, well, you know, we shouldn't pray for God's judgment upon this nation. We should pray, you know, that we're to bless our enemies. Well, uh, that's talking about individual people persecuting you. It's not talking about a nation that has rejected God and the Bible and that gets worse by the day with all the perversion and everything else that's now being promoted. And let's just you know, cut to the chase on the perversion thing. Um, what's the perversion agenda all about? The perversion agenda is about attacking the Bible. They've already tried to remove the King James Bible from schools in Utah. And, you know, that flopped. People fought it. Good, you know, that's fine. Good to hear. But uh, now we actually are having more people and they're coming out with new terms and new terminology all the time about that you can reassign things and you know if you say well you know everybody came from a man and woman so there are only two genders oh well that's your being i forget the term uh biologically you know persecuting me biologically or something it just it's so satanic it's so messed up and it's all being done to divide and conquer um our enemies are coming in and they're just having a field day right now turning americans against each other and you know, and it's real. You can't just say, "Well, let's not, let's not accept anything that turns us against each other." No, if somebody comes out and they say, 
you know, I identify now as a, as a woman and I'm going to go into the bathroom while your little boy's in there or something or some, or, you know, or excuse me, not, uh, I was thinking about a man identifying as a woman. Um, a man identifies as a woman, I'll say it this way, and he goes in while your wife is in the bathroom or something or your little girl. Obviously, you can't just say, well, you know, I'm not going to start a fight here because I don't want to go along with the divide and conquer agenda. You can't do that. You have to fight them. You have to say, hey, this is wickedness. This is unacceptable. So people are allowing themselves to fall into the different camps. And again, why? Because people have gotten wicked. People are are uh, apathetic and everything. So, it's probably probably about seven o'clock in the morning right now, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, it's a good time to come out here early morning. Um, a lot of times the bugs are still in bed if you get out early enough. Uh, so, but, um, Pray, pray and ask for the Lord's protection, brethren, because uh, nobody is completely ready for what's coming. No one. Um, we live out in a wilderness area. We have a nice property that the Lord blessed us with, off-grid and the whole thing. I'm not fully prepared. No way. This nation becomes racked by civil war and all kinds of upheavals and everything else. Um, it's going to be bad for everybody, regardless of where you're at. And we're going to have to see the power of God working. Um, and ironically, I think that it's going to be a good opportunity to actually see who's real and who's fake. Because there will be things that will try men and women. And those trials of faith are going to prove who the true Christians are and who compromises and goes along with the wicked antichrist system that's forming. So, just, uh, oh, the, as far as the thing, I want to say one other thing about we should pray for God's blessing upon our enemies. Um, men do not feel a need for a savior until things get bad and they start to see uh, war and death and suffering and things like that. And, um, oh brother, we should pray for God to bless this nation, not for him to destroy it. Uh, then people won't get saved, genuinely born again. People will make empty professions of faith. They'll say, oh, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus. And then they live just like the world, they look just like the world, they act just like the world, they think like the world. And uh, it's false conversion. And the Bible talks about being in perils among false brethren. And that will happen in the future. Sorry to say it, but it will happen because my theory that I believe in is that the alt-right eventually will come to power here in America. Uh, we'll have somebody that uh, very, is very radical, a lot more radical than the speech reading Trump, Donald Trump. And the left will go crazy and that will probably start the war. But uh, we're already seeing this thing with the Catholics uh, coming up and they're defending, they're, they're coming out and they're talking about child trafficking through the sound of freedom. And Mel Gibson, the radical trad cat, and you have uh, Jim Cavaziel or whatever his name is, um, who blasphemed the Lord uh, by playing Jesus in the Passion film, the right eye darkened in the whole thing, the Antichrist symbology there. Uh, people don't even realize that stuff. And, um, you know, ironic that people also forget the fact that Jim Cavaziel, I think is how his name is pronounced, you know, he's, he was actually struck by lightning when he was on the cross when they were filming the movie. So, the Lord has ways of showing his displeasure. Uh, but you know, God didn't kill him because quite frankly, God will allow you to be deceived if you want to be deceived. Um, 
just the way it is. But all these people coming out, oh, Hollywood, they're finally putting out some truth about the child trafficking. And the liberal left is, is fighting against it. See, divide and conquer. That's what they're doing. Um, you know, if you want to convince me that Jim Cavazil and Mel Gibson are truly trying to expose child trafficking, then have them leave the Roman Catholic Church, which has been involved in child trafficking for centuries. They put these children in orphanages, Catholic orphanages, and those Catholic uh, nuns, priests, monks, whatever, they just rape those children over and over again. I mean, look at the court cases. Look at all the proof that's come out. Oh, but the Catholics are going to come out now and expose the system. Why? Because you don't like competition? I mean, please. It just irritates me how gullible people are. Oh, you know, Hollywood's going to do some kind of truth thing or something now. Yeah. No, they're not. Um, Hollywood's not going to be bringing out the truth. But they will be used for Roman Catholic propaganda in the future. Not very far off. And uh, then people are going to say, Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, we had a showing of you know, Sound of Freedom at our church, our local church. Uh, you know, and they came out with another movie about the Bible. Uh, and every single movie that Hollywood produces about a hero, Christian hero of the faith or some kind of Bible story or whatever, they always pervert it every single time. You know, cracks me up. And it blows my mind too how these Roman Catholics, I was watching an interview with this Jim Cavazio guy because I heard about this Sound of Freedom thing and I thought, what's this all about? So I was looking into it. And this Jim Cavazio guy, he's in this interview and he starts cussing, you know. And I thought, it's so strange because I've seen Roman Catholics down through the years, in person, in media, whatever, and they all share the same characteristic. My battery's dying, be right back. All right, I'm back, sorry about that. Dead battery or dying battery but uh i need to make a point about the thing of catholic men because i've known a lot of them and uh, like i said uh in person too so not just oh you're just watching videos and being selective with no i've actually talked to them in person uh when witnessing and things and um they will go, they all switch it's so weird They'll go between talking about Jesus and the Bible and holiness and righteousness and just like that they switch and they're using profanity and saying foul things and whatever else. I've seen it down through the years. They can't control their speech. It's so weird. And you'll get these guys and you watch them on YouTube and they say, oh, I'm a Christian. And you, know, and you start to think, okay, what does that mean? And sure enough, it'll take a little bit of time and they'll start dropping profanity. Um, you know, and you say, well, yeah, I've heard people say, you can't judge somebody's salvation by if they use profanity. Oh, absolutely I can. Absolutely I can. Um, because anybody that uses profanity knows that there's a wrong time to use profanity. They understand that there's times when you have to keep your mouth clean. And they'll say, oh, pardon my French, or something like that. Everybody knows that profanity is wrong. Why would you use it as a Christian? Why would you say, uh, well, occasionally I just use a cuss word, you know, or something. Jesus didn't. No guile found in his mouth. Okay. Uh, you say, well, Peter cursed. Yeah, but before he was saved, before he was converted, before Jesus died on the cross. And he was effectively rejecting Jesus Christ. Oh, brother. Now, don't shake off on me. We have a wet dog. All right. Uh, sorry about that little distraction there. Um, Luther jumped into this thing of water right here beside the little bridge that I'm standing on. But, uh, you no. Know, and that's why I'm against Roman Catholicism because it does not create a new creature in Christ Jesus. It creates men that are lost that, that know how to say religious things. That's all it is. It's a political, social, slash social club. Um, you get to be part of the Catholic Church, you get a good burial, you get good insurance, you get good connections, good place to you know, marry your children, good weddings and good ceremonies and 
access to your good local church and all the other stuff. You say, well, don't the Protestants do the same thing? Yeah, many Protestants do. The ones that uh, have gone away from protesting against Rome and they try to reform Rome. That's why I'm not a Protestant reformer. I would call myself a Protestant simply because I protest the abuses of Rome, but I am not a reformer. Um, Rome is corrupt. You cannot fix something that God has already preordained to destroy in Revelation 17 and 18. And that is the Roman Catholic Church. It's not America. That's such nonsense. Anybody that says that, they're not right with God. I mean, unless they're just totally green, they just got saved, and they've been led astray by a bunch of false ministries. I get it at that point, but... Uh, so, going on a little bit of a rant here this morning while walking. Um, just like to stress the importance of getting out in God's creation and getting some good exercise. Uh, but be careful as we move forward, brethren, because I'm going to tell you right now, the evil, as the evil increases, there's going to come up people that will appear to take a to take up a righteous standard. And, uh, you know, I get this, another thing, getting ahead of myself. People will appear to take up a righteous standard, but you have to examine them and say, wait a second here, are you a Catholic? Well, yes, I'm part of the Catholic Church, the one true church that, that Christ founded. Well, then Christ was awfully dumb founding a church that molests children and adds to the scriptures and overthrows the scriptures with their divine tradition, causes contradictions and everything else. Uh, no, Jesus Christ did not found the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church really doesn't show up until the fourth century when the, like I said earlier, Constantine made Roman or made a Christianity the official religion of Rome. And then they went back and forth on that after that. So, uh, but the, the whole papal state, Vatican state and everything else, the city there, that nation, it formed slowly throughout the centuries. Um, but you just have to understand that stuff. Uh, but you know, going forward, like I was saying, you're going to see a very strong thing of you're either with us or you're with the bad guys. Uh, hey, there's a Black Lives Matter march coming into town and the, the local uh, chapter of Knights of Columbus and the Freemasons, they're joining together. Come join with us and fight off the evil leftist liberals. Well, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I can't join with your knighthoods, your papal knighthoods. Um, I will fight with my God helping me. I will fight against the leftist liberals if they're coming around burning cities down or whatever else. Yeah, a lot of them are arming too, if you don't know that. And uh, I'm not going to just let them come and take me. I don't believe in that. I'm not a pacifist. Christianity is not a passive religion. It's a religion of action, going to prison for what you believe in, the Lord breaking you out of prison, and you going right back and preaching. It's a very active, very war-like thing. That's why Paul talks about, you know, uh, fighting as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, putting on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. So, you know, um, but this whole thing of who we're going to vote for, you know, what if they put uh, Donald Trump versus uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. or something? Well, they're both controlled. Um, there will be no real American president. Uh, understand that. You say, but yes, brother, but we have to choose the lesser of two evils. Well, uh, that's between you and God, ultimately. But I, I understand the whole system. It's all controlled. And, uh, but you know, there are real divisions. You can't just say, well, it's all part of the Jesuit plan to divide and conquer. That's there. But um, you have to take a side as a Christian. You have to do what's right. And a lot of times the devil's people, like the whole QAnon movement, they will take, you know, good stands. They will take things that 
are there for Bible believing Christian. And that doesn't mean you have to say, well, I, because they took it, I can't take that stand. I just can't do it because then I'd be joining with the enemy. Well, you have to take the stand regardless of who stands for truth. Um, you know, so I go over a bunch of examples there, but I think you can figure it out. We have to stand. And again, understand something here. As a Bible-believing Christian, you are part of the body of Christ. Okay, part of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. Right, very important to understand that. So, we have a higher power than the lost world. Um, and as long as you're not walking after the flesh, messing around with a bunch of fleshly sins, you're going to be a spiritual powerhouse that the devil's people, both sides want to get you ultimately. But they can't touch you until God says, okay, my servant, it's time for them to come home. You know, but you have to be careful about the thing of messing around in sin. That's why I preach so hard against sin. And I preach mostly about the sins of Christians. You know, getting into uh, bad types of entertainment, bad types of nutrition, or the lack of nutrition, I should say. All those things will make you spiritually weaker. Uh, you use a new version that comes from the Vatican, NIV, ESV, NASB, any of them. The King James Bible is a different Bible. It comes from a different part of the world. Uh, most people don't understand that. They think, oh, the King James, and then later on, the new versions came out to clarify the these and the thous. That's not the case. And uh, study it. And on my channel, too, I recommend, because a lot of other people lie about it. You get the James Whites and people like that, they'll lie to you about the Bible version issue because he's part of the enemy camp. Uh, he wants to destroy your faith in the Word of God, get you to profess to believe in the Bible while not holding any Bible as being perfect. So the Bible's God's Word, it's just not perfect. How does that work? Then you have a God that can't write a perfect book. Not really worth, you know, he can create all of this, but he can't write a book that's perfect. He has no ability to preserve something beyond original autographs that no longer exist. Okay. Uh, no, that's a satanic mode of thinking. And, you know, you want to get on my bad side very quickly, come out and tell me that I'm wrong for standing for the King James Bible. I have a lot of experience with that book. I've tried the new versions. A large portion of my life was spent going to church building where the new versions were read out of. I know what it produces, the corrupt fruit that it produces. So, but uh, we're getting close to the end of the trail here. I guess I'll just continue to rant for a little while. Um, so, there's some crazy times that are, that are here, but there's more crazy times that are coming. And we're going to see a lot of really insane stuff coming. With pretty much everything. <laughs> And as a Bible-believing Christian, you have to understand there are certain things that are prophesied, and there's no possible way to change that. There will be a mark of the beast. There will be a one-world government. The Roman Catholic Church is going to come to a very high level of power. Um, there will be an Antichrist. There is a falling away within professing Christianity, people departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Those are prophecies, or as one guy said the one time, pre-recorded history. Very well said. Um, it's not my quote, it was a Baptist pastor I was listening to years ago. And um, so, uh, it's been raining a lot, so it's real kind of damp right now in the air. Real high humidity. And it's real slippery. You have to be careful where you're walking. But a lot of fun nonetheless coming out here. I have to continue to switch arms because, you know, carrying my camera. I've tried the thing of the selfie stick 
thing and whatever else doesn't work. You know, these little lightweight selfie sticks and trying to put a camera on top of it doesn't work that great. And I have a gimbal, tried it a couple times, I've used it a few times, but it doesn't always work all that great either. So, but uh, my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> Need windshield wipers. E -e -e -e. <sighs> but just stand strong, brethren. Um, we all have different trials to go through. And remember that you will be rewarded for what you go through. There's no such thing as wasted time when you're serving the Lord. Uh, wasting time is when you start to serve your flesh. And you start to say, well, you know, I want to... Um, I want to... Uh, do some things that are pleasing to my flesh, then you're wasting your time. A lot of burdock out here. These plants with the big leaves like this. Those are some smaller leaves, but very good medicinal plant. There's also some fireweed spotted in among it. Uh, fireweed makes a really good tea if you've never heard of that. You can pick the leaves Put them through a little meat grinder, we use a handheld one, and then uh, let the leaves ferment to turn black, and then um, and then that and then dry them after they're fermented, and then you can put them in a tea ball or whatever else, make a really good tea. The Russians call it even chai tea, and uh, very good nutritional herbal tea, and. Uh, you know, cures all kinds of things and whatever else. Most people just walk right by. They don't even know what the plants are. They don't care. There's so much out here in God's creation that can heal you of all sorts of uh, diseases and whatever else. And most people just don't have time to study it. They don't care. They'd rather watch a bunch of wicked people, perverts in Hollywood, trying to change culture cultural revolution through Marxism and all kinds of other things uh, bringing in socialism through the destruction of morality and going against the Bible so well, we're just about back to the parking lot now but uh, mosquito at my ear there so hopefully you've enjoyed the walk this morning. I know you're not really walking. Maybe you could be moving your legs or something under the desk or whatever. <laughs> uh, but I have a bunch of things to do at the office and then I'm going to try to get back to doing some studies. But uh, you have to weigh things out too, brethren. There's times that you need to just go out and get some exercise. Um, take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Um, it's an old hymn. There's so many beautiful old hymns that most people have forgotten. And uh, it's important to remember the old hymns and to sing the old hymns, memorize them. Um, there's some different ones out there, but you know, Rock of Ages, Amazing Grace. Uh, you know, the old rugged cross. I mean, there's there's a lot of old hymns, um, mostly from the 1800s and early 1900s. Some going back earlier than that, like "A Mighty Fortress Is Our God" by Martin Luther. That one goes back uh, into the 1500s, back to the 16th century. So we are back to the parking area. I'll show you the new sign that they put in. It's kind of an interesting sign, and then I will sign out excuse me let me show you the new sign here just to show you where we were hiking so that will be it and uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos